So ChatGPT is no longer the most exciting thing in AI. Instead, everyone's freaking out about this new software called AutoGPT, which can essentially automate way more than ChatGPT was able to. This could make you a virtual assistant, this could be a wedding planner, this could be a nutritionist, this could be a lot of different things and automate substantially larger tasks than ChatGPT was able to. Now, how is it able to do this? Well, we're gonna talk about that throughout this video, and this is a full tutorial showing you how to set it up and how to actually use that. And I promise I will not be skipping any steps at all. So even an absolute beginner who knows nothing about coding can follow along, type in the letters I type, and get to the exact same place so that you can run your own version of AutoGPT very easily on your own computer. And I can prove that right here, this laptop right here, I have not done, this has nothing on there. It has no coding tools, this has no Python, this has nothing like that. So we will actually be setting this up from scratch so we're not skipping any steps. Now, like I said, AutoGPT is really, really impressive, but why is it different from ChatGPT? Well, ChatGPT is great. Obviously a large language model, you're able to ask it questions to run commands, and it can give you kind of one response at a time. Sometimes those can be complex responses, but nonetheless, one thing at a time. And in addition to that, you don't really have access to the internet with that. Whereas AutoGPT is able to aggregate many different what's called APIs, essentially work with different plugins. So you can have a Google API, so it's able to search the internet. You can have a ChatGPT uh, API, so you're able to use ChatGPT. You have a lot of different things in there. It can give you images, it can output uh, audio, that's actually like a simulated voice. It could be your simulated voice. Really endless options here. And really the big difference is rather than just asking for one command at a time, you can give it up to five different goals and then it'll iterate on itself. It'll run a command, it'll come up with an output, it'll give you a reason for that output, and then it'll come up with what its next command is going to be and it can iterate on that over and over until it's able to get you the results. So for example, if you say, I want to plan a wedding, it could first say, you know, what is the normal stuff for planning a wedding? And it can have a list of what, okay, this is the results. These are what I think I need to do in order to plan a wedding. Then the next step, it'll say, all right, now let's find local venues. And it can go and find local venues. And then it can look up the reviews of the venues. And then it can find the best reviewed venue. Then it could go after that and say, all right, let's find some catering. And so it can iterate and continue a longer process that otherwise you would need a person to either work with just Google or ChatGPT to kind of work on this themselves. So I hope that kind of explained it. I think a lot of examples throughout this video will be very helpful, but let's get over to my laptop and start off actually setting up AutoGPT. Like I said, it's very simple, very straightforward. You just have to follow along and do what I do. Now, before we get into the first step, I wanna point out that I will have links down below, like not affiliate links, just regular links, cause it's free to use. And this will be a link to the GitHub, which is the repository of where the, the source code is actually stored. So we will be downloading that and I'll, I'll go through that link in a second. I also have a link down there to install Python, which we will need. I use Anaconda, that's how I've always operated with Python. And we will have a link to visual code if you wanna use that. That's not absolutely necessary, but it does make it so much easier to view things like Markdown and different types of files that we will have in the repository. And then the fourth thing down there is a link to our free newsletter. So we are launching a brand new newsletter because AI is moving so quickly. So just when you thought you got a hold on ChatGPT, AutoGPT came out. And there's going to be more iterations and more changes and more improvement in this field. And so if you don't end up keeping up with this space, you're going to fall behind. And eventually somebody else is going to make the equivalent of AutoGPT to replace your job. And so really in our opinion, the best way to prevent this, the best way to keep up to date on everything is to know what's going on in AI so that you're on the leading edge. So you're not the one getting replaced, you're the one innovating and the most valuable person at your company. So step number one is to copy and paste the link in the description. It goes to github.com and this just has latest release. So it's going to change when you actually go to this. So right now the latest is V0.2.2. And this does of course change as they iterate depending on when you're watching this video. Don't worry if it's a later version, I will you know, cover everything that might change in, in this video as well as how to see what the changes are 
and if anything changes, how to actually utilize that. So that'll bring us to GitHub, which if you already have done any coding, you definitely know what this is. It's a very, very common place for any coders to save their source code so other people can read it, they can fork it, make different versions of it. It's super popular and really a powerful tool in this space. So going down here, you can see that AutoGPT version 0.2.2, they have a couple things that they changed from the last version. And down near the bottom, we should see download source code zip. Right now, by the way, I'm using a Mac. This will change almost nothing in this tutorial. I'll point out the things that it does change. If you're using Windows, essentially what I'm saying is you can still follow along and it's going to be essentially identical. So I just made a new folder called auto GPT and I wanna make sure that I'm downloading this zipped file to auto GPT. It downloaded to my downloads folder, so I'm just gonna copy and paste it over to this folder. And we do wanna make sure it is extracted because that's a zipped file. So once we're extracted on Mac, you just double click that. On Windows, you'll click on it. And at the top, you'll see a little menu that says extract all. Just click on that and you'll have it all extracted. And you should have all of these files here. Now it might look a little different when you're, whenever you're downloading that, but that's the first step we wanna do. The second step is to download Python. So if we just go to anaconda.com, that'll bring you to this right here and we can download. So right now it knows that I'm on a Mac, so I can download for Mac. I'm gonna click on that. Once again, that'll download to my downloads folder. And this is going to give us access to Python, which is incredibly powerful, it's free to use, and is really going to be essential in what we're doing in this video. So you'll see this package is downloading. When it's done, I'm just gonna click on that. It's going to run me through the installation. So we're gonna say continue. I'm just gonna keep continuing and agreeing. I've already read all this stuff before. And then when you're done, you can click on close. We're just gonna move that to trash. So what we wanna do is download Visual Studio Code. So then this is the next thing. So we can go to code.visualstudio.com. And right here we can have download Mac Universal. That's what we want. Depending on if you're on Windows, it'll just say Windows obviously, and you'll have that version, but it should be essentially the same. So this is gonna download. I'm gonna click on it so that when it's done downloading, it'll open that and we can install it. So we're gonna click on it and open it and that'll bring us to this page right here. So there we go, we have Visual Studio Code. Now we're gonna add this to our path so it's easy to access later on, just kind of saves us some steps. So hitting Command Shift P on Mac, uh, that'll bring up this. We can type in shell and you'll see shell command install code command in path. That's exactly what we wanna do. I'm just gonna to to say okay. I'm gonna type in my, my password for my laptop and now it is successfully installed. So we can actually close out of this. All right, so here we are. Now we're ready to actually get started. If you're on a Mac, you can hit the magnifying glass or command space and type in terminal. We're gonna open terminal. If you're on Windows, uh, you can simply do this with uh, PowerShell. And before anybody gets mad at me, I'm gonna switch over to dark mode. I had it in light mode because other tutorials, it was just like easier to see. But anyway, here we go. So we're in dark mode. I'll make this a little bit bigger as well. The first thing we're gonna do is set up our, Anacon or our Python environment. So we're gonna type in conda create dash n auto dash GPT, Python th equals 3.8. You could use other versions depending on when you're watching this video, but we're gonna do 3.8 right now. I'm going to hit enter. And it wants to know if we're going to proceed. So uh, letter Y and then enter uh, means yes, so it's going to proceed. Now a couple little housekeeping items. We want to navigate into uh, the folder that we have. So this folder right here, auto GPT, uh, I'm going to, on Mac, you just you know right click down here and you can say copy the path name. On Windows, it'll be on the top, so you can just click on the bar that has all the path name listed, copy that. And then down here, we can say CD space and then paste that. Um, and that'll bring you into that. Now, if you're not familiar with Terminal or PowerShell, essentially what you can do, CD is going to navigate around different folders. So if you wanna go back a folder, you can say CD space dot dot, and that'll bring you back to the previous folder. And if you don't know what's in that folder, you can say LS, that'll list out what is in that folder. So we're going to list it out. I only have one thing in this folder, you can see right there. And so if you wanna go into that, you can say CD, and then we can type in auto dash, and you can hit tab to auto complete that once you have some of it typed, and hit enter, and that's how we're going to end up in that folder. So this is exactly where we wanna be. So now that we're, okay, so now that we're in the right folder, if we type LS, you'll see these are all the files, this is exactly what we want. Now we can say code space dot, and that'll open up Visual Studio Code, as you can see right here. Um, so I'm going to trust my own parent folder here. And you can see on the left, these are all the files. Now, the reason I told you to download Visual Studio Code is because we have files in here, for example, Markdown, which is really hard to read when you just look at it like this. But if you right click on it, 
you can go and say uh, preview, open preview, and it'll open it up in this really nice looking format with pictures and it just looks like it's so much easier to read something like this. Now, this is the readme file, which is going to essentially be our guide to use, to use AutoGPT. So the reason I wanted to show you this, I mean, first of all, we're gonna follow along in this video, but just in case anything changes, this is where you'd go to actually find that. So I'm trying to make this video as future-proof as possible so that future iterations of this, if anything subtle changes, you will still be able to use this, but I'm confident that for the most part, everything we're doing in this video will be exactly correct no matter when you're doing that. So right now, we're at this stage right here. So we want to, we already downloaded that, we want to install the requirements. So there's a file over here called requirements, uh, down here, requirements, and we want to install all of the necessary uh, packages that we'll need for this AutoGPT. So I'm just gonna copy this, and we're gonna go back to our terminal right here, our command terminal, and we can paste it down there. This will be pip install dash r requirements.txt. Hit enter, it's going to install a bunch of little things down there. All right, so while that's installing, going back to the readme, the next thing we wanna do is configure auto GPT. Now, luckily, there's really not much we have to do here. We just have to add in our personal API key, and I'll show you exactly how to do that, and change one other thing if you're using a Mac. There's other APIs we can enable, and you can mess around with this later, but just getting it set up for the, like the absolute basics, let's start off with adding your open API key. So what we wanna do is go back to terminal and we can type in cp.env.template space.env. So essentially what we're doing is we're making a copy of env.template and just making it .env. So I'm gonna hit enter and that should do that over here. We can go back to Visual Studio Code and see that we now have a file called .env and everything is green, which means it's commented out, which means it's not going to be run as code. But if there's anything that you do want to run as code, so if we go down here, let me just search for Mac, uh, it's somewhere down here, there we go. So because we're using Mac right here, the thing that is single commented, I'm just going to delete that little hash, and now we are using Mac and it's set to false. I'm gonna change that to true. So we're gonna set that to true. Now the only other thing on here that I'm going to change initially, like I said, there's other things we can add. We can add an API for image output or, or voice output or different things like that. But the only thing that you actually need to add to run this is your own API key, which you can see right here. So I'm going to delete that right now. And we're gonna go over to ChatGPT, um, or OpenAI's website rather, and we're going to get our API key, our secret key that is personal for us that we can use right here. So what I'm gonna do is from my browser, go to platform.openai.com slash account slash API dash keys. Again, I have a link in the description so you can follow along there. I'm gonna hit enter, and from here I'm just gonna have to sign in. So you should already have a ChatGPT account. If you don't, uh, you can sign up right now, and I highly recommend you watch my full video about ChatGPT where I go through the 10 different major commands and modifiers that you can use to really optimize your effectiveness on ChatGPT to become better in life, at work, whatever you're doing, whatever you're using it for. Highly recommend that video. Right now it has 1.4 million views and a lot of people are really finding it helpful. But regardless, assuming you already watched that video, the next thing is to log in. So that should take you to a page that looks just like this. You probably won't have these two right here. Um, I actually don't even need those so I can delete those as well. So we're gonna revoke that key and we're just gonna click on create new secret key. Now I'm gonna do this in this video. I'm gonna delete it so you guys don't use my credits here, but if we click create new secret key, we can call this whatever we want. So I'm gonna call it auto G, uh, GPT. I can copy that, that secret key. We're gonna say done. And then going back to Visual Studio Code, we have Visual Studio Code right here. I can paste it right in there. Now you could add this with quotes on either side. I don't believe you need to because they didn't originally. I did last time. This time I'm gonna not do that. Um, and it should work either way. That's just a string of text there. So then when you're done with this, we can save it. So we're gonna hit Control or Command S, Control S, depending on what you're using. And of course, I do also wanna save this workspace. So we're going to go to File, Save Workspace As, and we're gonna call it, that looks fine to me, and it's in this folder. So we're gonna say Save. And now there is one more thing we have to do on OpenAI's website, and we have to add a billing method. Uh, so you just go down to Billing, and it'll prompt you to add a, a payment method. Otherwise, you'll just click on Payment Methods, and you can add a new one there. But essentially, it's not free to use, but don't worry, it's not like you're not paying anywhere near dollars. Uh, if we go to billing history, for me, it was like a couple cents, or uh, was it usage? 
So if I go to usage limits, I was messing around with this yesterday. I spent 15 cents on this after a couple dozen commands uh, on this account in particular. So like I said, it's really not gonna cost you basically anything at all, but I highly recommend still go to usage limits and add your own limit on there. Hard limit's going to be like, do not spend more than this amount, just in case you send it on like full autonomous mode and iterates like a million times, you don't wanna ad end up spending more than you expected. And the soft limit is going to email you when you get to that limit, just so you have an idea of where you are so you don't accidentally terminate like some big you know loop that you don't wanna terminate. Um, so that's nice to have the soft limit as well. But right now, like I said, I'm only 15 cents in, so it's gonna take a while to get anywhere near those limits. All right, so now let's go back to terminal and we want to activate that environment we made a while ago. Remember we did the conda activate. So I'm just going to type in conda activate auto GPT. So I'm going to hit enter, that'll activate that. And now in the beginning, instead of saying base, it'll say auto GPT. So we're in this new environment. And now there's one last thing we need to do before we can start using auto GPT. And this is agree to the licenses. So in order to do that, you simply need to type sudo space Xcode build space dash license and hit enter. And it's going to ask for your, your, your password. That is the password for your computer. So I'm just gonna type that in. And now it's going to ask us to press the return key to view the license agreement. And we're gonna keep pressing this until, or press space bar until we get to the bottom. So you can read through all this. This is the license agreement for what you're doing. And at the end, you can type in agree, type in agree, and we'll be ready to go. So now we're able to run auto GPT, so we're ready to go. Now, if you go back to the readme, it tells you to run uh, to say dot slash run dot sh space start. Uh, you probably don't actually want to do that. Instead, you could just type in, like forget the word start um, and just run it like this. And it should be running chat G or it should be running auto GPT. You have your API. If everything goes according to plan, this will be running and it'll prompt you in just a minute to ask a couple fundamental questions like what is the name and what are the goals of your auto GPT. All right, and there we go. Once you see this colored text, you'll know that you are ready to go. We're using auto GPT now. And so it wants to know, first of all, what the name is. I'm just gonna call this one MikeBot. But again, you can use this for many different things. You can search other examples of people that used it to make a, like an assistant, to, to plan a wedding, to do things like that. So let's do this. I'm gonna create a new document. We're gonna say file, save as. So I'm just gonna save this, call it diet. And we want this to be plain text dot, so dot txt. Let's save it. And we're going to say okay. Now we have just a regular document called diet. It's a plain text file. So in auto GPT, we can say the AI name, this is going to be um, Mike, Mike's nutritionist, Mike's diet or nutritionist. Now it's going to ask us to define it. So that describe the role. Um, we're gonna say create a meal plan for this week. And so I'm just gonna say, let's create a seven day meal plan. We want to write the recipes for each one. And at the end, we want to just save it to the file and then stop. And if we only have three goals instead of five, you just hit enter again and it'll start running. This is using local memory, by the way. You could pay and, and use Pinecone or some of the other ones uh, to not need local memory, but obviously for something like this, local memory is just fine. Now the way this works is it'll run through one prompt at a time. So it'll tell you that, first of all, this is what it thinks it's supposed to do. It should start looking up healthy meal plans for the week. The reasoning, it's going to tell you why it's doing this, the criticism, maybe what it doesn't want to do. And then it'll tell you what it's going to do next. And we could just say why for yes to mean go ahead and do it. Uh, N is going to be no, meaning don't do it. It's going to exit the program. Or you can add your own feedback in there as well. I'm just going to say why and let it run. And right now you can see right there, Google return. So it, it's actually searching on Google right now to find some results from the internet. So the first thing, it wants to know what dietary restrictions or preferences I have. So I'm gonna say, uh, I have no dietary restrictions. I love Mexican and Asian food as well as American food. I have plenty of vegetables. Okay, so there we go. Just give it some feedback, that's what it was asking. So it said, like before we proceed, it needs to know any dietary restrictions or what it wants for the meal plan or what I want for the meal plan. It's gonna ask me about each meal as we go along. And so yeah, stir fry sounds good. I love some stir fry. For Tuesday, how about make some tacos? We can use ground turkey. Uh, let's say let's use shredded chicken. 
So you could say like, yeah, I like tacos, but let's change that. I don't actually want ground turkey. Uh, let's do something else. So you don't always have to say why or n for yes or no on these things. You can give some other feedback and it'll kind of iterate and keep making your, your diet plan around that. So uh, let's see, great, we can use shredded chicken. Yeah, no problem. So now we're gonna go on to the next thing, press Y, and it's gonna kind of keep iterating on this and it should hopefully make my diet by the end. Now, there, now if you get tired of pressing Y every time or giving it feedback like this, there are also fully autonomous ways to do this. So if you go into the README, so let me just open it up real quick while it's running, you can go to down, down near the bottom, just look for like the little skull emoji because they tell you it's dangerous, but I'm still interested in doing it. And there we go, continuous mode. So right here, you can actually run continuous mode here. It'll iterate continuously until you press control C. So obviously, like this said, it could get stuck in loops. It could do things that you don't want it to do. So definitely be careful with this. Um, but again, you don't always have to press Y if you set up continuous mode. I'm not recommending you do that, but I might end up doing that. Just, it's interesting, I don't know. And by the way, in case you ever get stuck in a loop on here, or if it's running something and it's stuck, it, it's not, it, you have some kind of error and it doesn't actually stop, you can terminate any of these by saying control C. Uh, this is on Mac. If you're on Windows, I don't think it's control, I think it's alt, but it's say control C and it's going to quit. We can hit any key and we're back to where we were. And if you want to run it again, you can just go press the up key to the most recent command, which was dot slash run dot sh hit enter, and it's going to run it again. And we'll be able to start off again with a brand new auto GPT. All you have to do down here, it's gonna ask if you wanna continue, you just press the letter N and you'll go from scratch. So now it found a diet and it's going to write that to the document. Sometimes it takes a minute to think, it's a little bit slower if a lot of people are on it. You can go and check the uptime and you can check basically the status of OpenAI's chat GPT. Um, there's a nice website for that as well. Uh, if it's ever not working, maybe that would be a reason. Otherwise, if you ever have any bugs in this, if anything ever doesn't work, uh, you should be getting, like I said, you could hit Control C, that'll terminate this if it gets stuck on thinking for too long, and you could debug it using Chat GPT. It's one of the greatest tools out there, especially if you don't know what you're doing. You just copy the error code onto Chat GPT, tell it what you're trying to do, ask why it's not working, and it can walk you through things surprisingly well in plain English. I found this works tremendously well on many different programs out there that you find on GitHub that maybe have a bug or, you know, something's not right with them. So I'm editing the video right now and I realized I used a really simple example here. So you might be wondering how this is even different from regular ChatGPT. Like I could ask ChatGPT to make me a diet plan and it could do something pretty similar to this. So really the benefit of AutoGPT is that it connects and integrates with different APIs, different things as well. So you could add into this, use my voice, like you can use a plugin and use my voice to speak it to me. You could translate videos, you could uh, output images. There's a lot of different things you can connect with this. So that's really where the power of auto GPT is. And so as you start to like, this is a great first example and I recommend you do this uh, just so you get auto GPT running and start getting used to it and mess around with little, you know, some little commands like this. But eventually what you wanna do is start using those integrations so you can really get this to the next level. In addition, this can also do things like write to text files, do, you know, do a lot more that auto that ChatGPT cannot. So ChatGPT is purely on the internet. It's stuck there. Like what you're doing on that interface, you're just going to get text output. Whereas this, like I said, can change files, can do things on your computer, can output different files as well, whether they're audio files that are recordings of a, an, like an AI simulated version of your voice or images. There's a lot more you can do with this. This is really only the beginning, but I mean, I just wanted to clarify that in case you're watching this video and wondering how this was even different from ChatGPT. And of course, it's able to access the internet while also accessing ChatGPT. So it's kind of a nice bridge between ChatGPT and the internet so you can find more relevant and more recent information. So that is my tutorial on how to use AutoGPT. It's really just the tip of the iceberg here. This is a massive software and you can do a lot of automations. So I highly encourage you start messing around with that and please leave a comment down below on this video and let me know what you would use AutoGPT for. I really, I'm always interested, are you using it for a personal assist? Are you using it to emulate your voice and, and, you know, open images and do different things? There's really endless options that you could do. So I would love to hear what your thoughts are on the best uses for AutoGPT. And once again, if you guys want to keep up with the latest here, anything that changes with AutoGPT, we will be covering in that newsletter, which is linked down below. If you enjoyed the video, consider liking and subscribing. I'm Mike O'Brien. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.